you. We'll wait and see what he gives. All right, well, because let's stand up. Let's sing everything that has breath. Let's praise him. That everything that, that everything that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that, that everything that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. That everything that, that everything that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that, that everything that. That everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise in the morning, praise in the evening, praise when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise when I'm laughing, praise when I'm grieving, praise in every season of the soul. If we could see how much your work your power, your might, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to praise you. That everything that, that everything that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. That everything that, that everything that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise you in the heavens, join with the angels, praise you forever and a day. Praise you on the earth now, join with creation, calling all the nations to your praise. If we could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to pray. That everything that, that everything that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. That everything that, that everything that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I will worship, I will worship, I will worship you with every breath. I will worship, I will worship. I will worship you with every breath. I will worship, I will worship, I will worship you with every breath. I will worship, I will worship, I will worship you with every breath. That everything that, that everything that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that, that everything that, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Everything. You know, I'm wondering when I hear the wind blowing through the trees. You know, it doesn't have breath, but I always wonder if that's a little song to God from the trees. Or, I don't know, I'm just thinking. <laughs> All right, that's why we praise Him. came to live, live a perfect life. He came to be the living word of life. He came to die so we'd be reconciled. He came to rise to show his power and might. And that's why we praise him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we 
we bow down and worship this King, cause He gave His everything, cause He gave His to live, live again in us. He came to be our conquering King and friend. He came to heal and show the lost ones His love. He came to go, prepare a place for us. And that's why we praise Him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer Him our everything. this king cause he gave his everything cause he gave his everything that's why we praise him that's why we sing that's why we offer him our everything that's why we bow down and worship this king cause he gave his everything Cause he gave his everything
seated. Okay, I'm going to end up with you or God alone. Father, we thank you so much that you are God alone. You're unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. One true God, there is none other above you. We're so thankful that, that you want that relationship with us, Lord. The creator of the universe, of all universes, took time to create each one of us, loves each one of us, extends his mercy to each one of us, sent your only son just for us, died upon the cross just for us. We celebrate that resurrection 
is ascending into heaven, sitting at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for each one of us every day. We mess up so many times, but you still love us. We're just a step away, a heartbeat, to be able to talk to you, straight to you. What a blessing. So, Father, I just pray today that, that you'll just create in us clean hearts. Lord, if there's somebody that we come across that doesn't know you, I just pray that you'll place it on our on our hearts to give us the words to speak, to at least plant the seed that he'll come to you. Take you as Lord and Savior of his life. And he can spend eternity with you. We thank you so much in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
I'm going to be reading from the book of uh, 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith, for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this portion of your word, and we pray that you would uh, help us to uh, learn from what you have before us. Uh, indeed, it has a lot of a lot of things in it, and um, a lot of uh, wonderful. Uh, promises and just um, teach us and uh, help us to share these things with others as well. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you were going to be planning on a cruise, it would uh, take a little work. You'd have to be looking at maybe some ads. Uh, surfing the internet a little bit, trying to figure out where you might want to go, what the it itinerary of the cruise might be, um, and what you could do at various places that you went to, and you have to think about how you're going to do that. You know, would you need a passport? Uh, how to do travel plans to and from where the cruise leaves, and uh, how you're going to pay for it, who's going to cover for you while you're gone. So a lot of things would go into the planning. And then at some point, it would become an actual plan. Your names would be placed on the roll of those that are actually going. You would have given somebody your credit card or something so that it would be paid for. But still, at that point, it, with a cruise, things could go wrong. You could have ship be damaged, uh, weather issues come up, illness come up on the ship, or things could go wrong with you. You could get ill or die, or plans might have to change for some reason. Um, we're going to be talking about um, uh, today the cruise, which is our certain hope that we have. It's, it's much better than the cruise that I'm talking about, because... <clears throat> The cruise I was talking about is not so certain, but this is a certain hope. Uh, we'll talk about the basis or guarantee of our hope, and that's that we're the resurrection of Christ, we're born again, and the power of God. We'll talk about the surety of our hope. We'll talk about what our hope is not like, and then we, we are preserved by God, and that our hope is reserved in heaven for us. So first of all, the cruise, which is our hope. Uh, Peter refers to a living hope. Now, in the English language, um, hope is not always that certain. You may hope that a certain candidate is going to win um, uh, a certain political race, but that may or may not come about. Uh, but in, in the Bible, when it's talking about hope, it's an eternal reality that we're sure of by faith. Uh, I'd like to read Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Uh, and we get that hope by the new birth. It's referred to as a living hope because it's, it's ongoing. This hope is not going to die um, or go away. Uh, the one that we hope in is living. He has been raised from the dead. Death has no, no power over Christ because death is because of the wages of sin, but Christ was sinless. He died as our substitute, bearing our punishment on himself. And so death does not have power over him, and we have victory over the death, over death in Christ. First uh, Corinthians 15. 
uh, 54 to 57. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, in addition to uh, death, uh, having the victory over death, we are raised with Christ, as Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 7 tells us. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So it's because of God's mercy that we are raised. Uh, we're made alive and raised with him, seated with him in the heavenly realms. Uh, another way to refer to this is the new birth, which First Peter talks about in verse 3 of chapter 1 of First Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We, so this cruise is referred to as um, our hope. It's also referred to as our inheritance and as, and as our salvation. So when we talk about inheritance, inheritance is something that belongs to us. It's kept in heaven for us, and the Holy Spirit is an earnest of our inheritance. Hmm. My cards are out of order. <laughs> Just a second. Good thing I put numbers on them here. <laughs> okay. So... Now, if, if you're thinking about an inheritance um, and you're talking about inheriting something from your parents or something like that, the parent has to die before you get the inheritance. And so this happened in the case of Christ. Christ died that we might receive the inheritance. He is the seed uh, that was promised to Abraham through which the blessing comes. And we get the blessing because of our union with Christ. And I mentioned the Holy Spirit being the earnest of our inheritance. So if you're buying a house, you may put down some earnest money. That's a guarantee that you're going to buy that house. In the same way, God has put his Holy Spirit upon us and said, this, this one is mine. And, uh, and so that's a guarantee that that inheritance is, is coming to us, heaven. It's also referred to as salvation, and salvation in this case in the future tense of salvation. Salvation is a general term for deliverance or preservation. It can be used referring to the past, the present, or the future. And I'll show you some verses that refer to each of those. Colossians 1.13 refers to something that occurred in the past. For he, he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Regarding the present, we have Philippians 2, 12 through 13. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Then we have several verses referring to salvation in the future. Um, Romans chapter 8, verses 21 through 23. That the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. 
And not only this, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, <clears throat> waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. And then we have uh, Romans thirteen eleven. Do this knowing the time that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now salvation is nearer to us than when we believed. And then uh, 2 Timothy 2.10. For this reason I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus, and with it eternal glory. So, um, again, to recap, our cruise is referred to uh, as our living hope. It's referred to as our inheritance and as our salvation. And um, so, next, the guarantee or, or basis of our hope. Now, the term guarantee isn't used in the passage, but the idea is, is kind of there. A guarantee is only good as long, is as good as the one who makes the guarantee. If you put money in the bank and they say, we guarantee this money is going to be here for you. And then the bank has a run on the bank and they're out of money. Your guarantee is not so good, right? If uh, you get one of these West Texas hailstorms and it takes your roof out and you hire a roofing company to repair your roof and then they say this is guaranteed for 20 years three years later you get another hail storm you look in the phone book for that company and lo and behold they're not there your guarantee is not too good right it, it's only as good as what your your hope is in but our guarantee is sure because it's based on the resurrection of christ being born again and the power of god so the resurrection of Christ is something that's actually occurred. It's well attested to. It displays the power of Christ and is the means of our salvation. So that's a pretty good guarantee that our hope is going to be there. Born again, going to, born again according to God's great mercy. We, we didn't deserve it. We, in fact, were spiritually dead. So we couldn't really cause this ourselves. It, it says that God caused this. His work is effective in our lives through his word. And we're united to the resurrected Christ. And the Holy Spirit is, is working in us. Uh, Galatians chapter 3 <clears throat> verse 2. This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? So you see that hearing with faith that took place in our lives because of the work of the Spirit. Um, because we're born again, we um, are alive spiritually. And um, we, we think a different way because we've been born again. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 16 talks about this. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may know the things freely given us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And we also see that this being born again affects our, the behavior that we have and the goals that we have in our lives. So we'll be reading from Romans um, chapter Eight verses five through seven. Or four, yeah. I'm sorry. I gave the wrong. It's yeah. Uh, four through eight, yeah. So the requirement of the law might be fulfilled, so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. 
who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God, it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So we, you see we have different abilities there as uh, um, instead of being in the flesh, we're in the spirit. And we have different goals in our lives. And God's word says that God is going to continue his work um, that he's begun in us. Uh, this is from um, Philippians 1 verse 6. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. So in addition to the resurrection and being born again as guarantees that we have this uh, hope, this salvation, we also have the power of God, which is an unlimited or infinite power He's he's the one who created all things out of nothing. So all of these things make our hope very secure. Uh, it's a it's a solid guarantee that we have this hope laid up for us in heaven. And last, the surety of our hope it is going to happen. So what our hope is not. And our hope is not perishable, it's not defiled, and not fading. So I'm going to go over a number of verses on this. So what I've done trying to figure out what the, the text is telling us is go to the words there in the Greek and um, look up various texts that talk about these words so to, to show what these words mean. So that's where I come up with all these verses. So um, it's all based on, on the Greek. But I didn't give you the Greek because, you know, you don't know Greek. So um, I, I know a little bit of Greek, but I, I mainly get that, you know, from a program that helps me find all those verses. But um, anyway, so our hope is not perishable. So the first verse deals with that word perishable. And it's First Peter 1. 18. Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers. So it's very interesting that it uses silver and gold as perishable things because we usually think of them as pretty imperishable. But the Bible says, yeah, those are perishable. Uh, so it's just silver and gold. All right. Uh, the next three verses talk, they have both the term for perishable and imperishable in the same verse. So, um, the next verse is what? Is it Romans one twenty three? Yeah. And exchange the glory of the incorruptible, that's one of our words there, the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man. And of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. So the incorruptible God and corruptible man. Uh, then we have um, 1 Corinthians 9.25. This is kind of appropriate because we have the Olympics going on right now. It's talking about the games here. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. Um, they then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So the athletes at that time, they, when they won, they, they get a wreath. Well, that wreath wouldn't last too long. Depends on what it's made of, but it still wouldn't, wouldn't last that long. But we as Christians have an imperishable wreath in store for us. And then 1 Peter 1, 23. For you have been born again, not of seed, which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word of God. So it's the word of God. 
which is imperishable itself, it's because of that word that we're born again. And so we are um, imperishable because we've been born of an imperishable word. And then we'll look at some verses that have only the word imperishable in them. Um, I think the first one is uh, 1 Timothy 1.17. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, that's our word, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15.52. In a moment, in the twinkling of the eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. So we're going to be imperishable. Um, then we have um, uh, 1 Peter 3, 4. But let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. Then I, I also looked at the verb to corrupt, because uh, that's the um, the other words based on that verb. So next are some verses that talk about the, the have this verb corrupt. Uh, Isaiah twenty four three through four. The earth will be completely laid waste and completely despoiled, for the Lord has spoken His word. The earth mourns and withers; the world fades and withers. The exalted of the people of the earth fade away. So we find out that the earth is perishable. We usually think of it as um, not perishable. We think, well, the earth's going to last forever. But um, that's not correct. Um, then uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 2. This refers to some moral corruption here. Make room for us in your hearts. We wronged no one. We corrupted no one. We took advantage of no one. And Ephesians 4.22. That in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit. So the old nature is corrupted, but that new nature we have is, is not corrupted. Um, 1 Corinthians 15.33. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. And uh, 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. But I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray, led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. So he's afraid that their minds are going to be corrupted. So, but fortunately, uh, our, our inheritance is not corruptible. It's not subject to that. It's, it's eternal. Um, it's undefiled. Uh, James 1, 27. Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Hebrews 7.26 For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. In Jeremiah 2.7 I brought you into the fruitful land to eat its fruit, and it's good things. But you came and defiled my land and my inheritance you made in an abomination. So isn't it nice to know that nobody's going to come into heaven and defile it? Not you, not anyone else. Because at that point, we'll be perfect. Uh, there will be no more sin. And so no more of that defiling that we see on earth. Um, and it's also our inheritance is unfading. We see this term used in James 1, 11, talking about the rich man. For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass, and its flower falls off, and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. 
And then Job, um, I can't read mine. Yeah, 1530. Okay. He, it's talking about the wicked. He will not escape from darkness. The flame will wither his shoots, and by the breath of his mouth he will go away. So if something fades away, it just kind of gradually disappears. But uh, our inheritance is not going to be something that's going to disappear. It's, it's, it's there for us. The next thing is we are preserved. And this, is, this fits right in with that scripture that was uh, read for us by Bob just a little, little bit ago. We are preserved by, by God's power. So... Some verses based on this word for preserved. It's the word that means guarded. So that these next three verse, next couple of verses, um, um, use that word guarded or guard. Second uh, Corinthians eleven thirty two. In Damascus, the ethnarch under Aretas the king was guarding the city of the Damascenes in order to seize me. So Paul was there. And that city was being guarded. They didn't want anyone getting out, especially Paul. Um, so they were guarding that city. And then Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So in the same way as this guarding is taking place there in these verses, we are being guarded or preserved by God. Now, the concept of guarding may not be the word, but the same concept is found in a number of different verses. And I've chosen John 10, 27 through 30, which may be somewhat of a repeat. But anyway, uh, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give eternal life to them and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And then uh, Jude, verses 24 to 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23-24 Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, and he will also bring it to pass. Then we have uh, John, uh, uh, let's see, we have 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. Um, but the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. And then we have John 17.15. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. So we have this inheritance that uh, is, is there. It's not uh, something that's corruptible. It's not fading. And uh, it's um, uh, not defiled. And we're going to get there because we're preserved and it's also kept in heaven for us. This is similar to a reservation. So you get there at the side of your cruise and you say, here I am. And they look at the list and say, yeah, we don't have you down. It's not going to be that way, though, for us because our reservations are there. So uh, so anyway, but when we get there, our reservation is, is going to be there. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, John 14, 1 through 3. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. 
And then we have Acts um, 16, verse 23. I think we have that same word that kept um, our guard. When, when they had struck them with many blows, they threw them into prison commanding the jailer to guard them securely. So our, our inheritance is guarded there in heaven. And then um, Corinthians 1, 5, uh, Colossians rather. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of truth, the gospel. So in conclusion, we can look forward to our inheritance, uh, our, our living hope, our salvation. We can look forward to heaven and rejoice in it. Salvation has been begun in us by God, if we are Christians, and he's going to complete his work in us. He's not going to start it and then and then it goes nowhere. No. If he began, began a work in us, he's going to complete that work. And... Um, which reminds me, I think I may have left a verse out, but I think I had Romans 8, yeah, 29 through 30. I don't know if you have that handy, but I'll, I'll, I can read it. Um, For whom he foreknew, he also foreordained to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And whom he foreordained, them he also called, whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So you see, the whole process, it, it, it continues on. From, from the very first God's electing us uh, to all the way to being glorified in heaven. So, and we should praise God for his salvation. Um, nothing can take his salvation away from us. Um, and that's because of God's God's power, the power of God and the power of Christ to to hold us in his hands. So let's close with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great hope that we have, a hope that is uh, a sure hope because your word assures us that this is was in store for us as believers. Um, we thank you um, that you watch over us and you have reservations for us um, uh, um, and uh, we just pray that you would be with us um, as we work out our salvation in this life as we put into practice the, the principles of your word that we would become more and more like you and then we look forward to the day we'll be glorified and made perfect in heaven um, and can enjoy your presence there. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.